Right, let's have a look at question three. The diagram below shows the percentage of their total sleep that men and women spend in deep sleep depending on their age in years A. OK, and for anybody with a Fitbit, if you've ever analysed your sleep or any any kind of a smartwatch, you'll see that there's all different states of sleep, deep sleep or REM. I can't even remember the, the other ones. There's light sleep and so on and so forth. And of course, awake. So this is the percentage of total sleep spent in deep sleep for men and for women. OK, so when I read this graph, OK, just a quick look at the graph, I can see they're looking at ages from 10 to 70. And I can see the percentages that they've plotted is between 6% and 22%. So we don't spend a whole lot of time in deep sleep by the looks of things. They've plotted it for men and women, which suggests that men and women are slightly different. OK, so that's that's the graph. And, and a lot of project math is, can you read a graph? OK, so Gina is a 20-year-old woman. Use the diagram to estimate the percentage of her total sleep that Gina spends in deep sleep. Show your work on the graph. And so, so important on any functions question that you show your work on the graph, because you'll find that the maths itself, there isn't much maths. So what they're examining is your ability to read a graph. And therefore, to show that you know that, you have to have your rough work done on, um, on the graph. So Gina is a 20 uh, year old woman, okay? So I have her age, so therefore I come in from the age side. So in other words, I locate 20, because that's what age Gina is, and I approach my graph from that side. She's a woman, so I'm going to, the only line that's relevant to her is the red line. Okay, so so let's, let's zoom in and let's see. Now you would do this with the ruler, um, and I tend to do it in dashed lines like so. OK, right up until you touch the graph that's relevant. And in this case, it's the red one. And then you go across to the other axis. So I can see that Gina spends 16 percent of her total sleep in deep sleep. OK. Um, I thought that might help me make a straighter line, but I don't think it does. OK. So use the diagram. So I hope that makes sense. We're coming in here at the 20 because that's the age that it said Gina was. And that's what they gave us about her. So we have to come from the graph at the age side. So her 16% is your answer there. OK, Gina spends an average of eight hours in, to in total each night. She sleeps an average of eight hours in total each night. Work out how many hours Gina spends in deep sleep on average each week. In deep sleep, okay. So if she's eight hours each night, then in a week, we have 60, 56 hours of sleep. It's 7.56, yeah. Okay, so how much is she then in deep sleep? Well, we know that it's 16% of the time. Okay, so 56 divided by 100, multiply by 16. You pop on the calculator, 56 divided by 100, multiply by 16. And I got 8.96. Hours. Okay, of course, you could have done it where you got 16% of eight hours. That would have been perfectly fine as well, um, which would have been eight over 100 multiplied by 16. So let me try that, see what I get. Uh, that's 1.28 hours. And of course, multiply that by seven because it's one point. Two eight hours of deep sleep per night. So multiply it by seven days, and of course you get eight point nine six hours as well. Okay. So again, doesn't matter which way you're doing that. That's why we use percentages because it's it's kind of a relative one. I could do it per week, or I could do it per day and multiply by seven, and you get the same thing. Okay. Now, it didn't specify here, but how would I convert that to hours and minutes? Okay. 
let's change color and let's have a look. So 8.96 hours. So you'd get full marks if you, if you left your answer like that, or if I was asked for it in hours and minutes. So you know that there's only 16 or 60 minutes in an hour. So that's definitely not 96 minutes. Okay, so you'd go 0 0.96 times 60. And I'm getting 57.6 minutes. Okay, so I could write it as eight hours, 57.6 minutes. Okay, or to the nearest minute, 58 minutes, eight hours, 58 minutes. OK, so that's how you convert to hours and minutes if you're asked to. But you weren't asked here, so that's a perfectly acceptable answer. OK, so there's a good few parts in this now. I think it's all the way to F, so that's A and B. C, use the diagram to fill in the inequality in A below to show the age range for which women spend a lower percentage of their sleep in deep sleep than men do. So when are women lower than men? OK, so let's look. So when is women lower? Well, they're lower here. Do you see they fall under the blue curve here? And then that's the turning point. At that point, then women actually spend. So as women get older, they spend more time in deep sleep compared to men. OK, but up until the age of 50, that's the intersection point. Up until the age of 50, women are in deep sleep less than men. So between 10 and 50, women are less. OK, so that's the inequality that they want. So between 10 and 50. OK, so inequality just means that the age can be any age between 10 and 50. And if you pick any age between 10 and 50, you will find that the women uh, have less deep sleep than, than men. So that was C. D. The data in this survey was collected from 6 billion nights of sleep, where a billion is a thousand million. Write 6 billion in the form A by 10 to the N, where 1 is less than or equal to A is less than 10. Okay, so this is scientific notation and it comes up quite a bit. Um, and it's just a way of writing big numbers. So just to explain scientific notation, if I, if I can ramble for a few minutes, scientific notation, I'm going to pick the number uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so could I write that number in a different way? Well, I could. I could write it as one, two, three, four, five, six, point seven, multiply by 10. Okay, and when you multiply that number by 10, that decimal point will end up moving over here. And of course, you get back to the original number. I could also write it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.67, except in this case, I'd have to multiply it by 100 or 10 squared, because 10 squared is 100. And again, that's another way, that whole thing is another way of writing this number. OK, or of course, I could write it as one, two, three point four, five, six, seven. OK, what will I have to multiply it by this time? One, two, three, four. So I need four zeros. So by 10,000. So you can see there's actually a link between where the decimal point is, because if you remember in any number, there would be a decimal point there. We just don't bother putting it in when it's a whole number, but that's where the decimal point lives. So to multiply by 10, that decimal point moves back one place. To multiply by 100, can you see that decimal place move back two places? To multiply by 10,000, that decimal place actually moved back four places. And 10,000 can be written as 10 to the four. So there's also a link between four and the number of zeros. Okay, so to repeat, scientific notation is just a way of writing very large numbers. So for example, if I was giving you the number like that, let's 
smaller. It's 120 million by the looks of things. Okay, how could I write that as a small number? Well, I could write it as 12 multiply by 10 to the, let's see how many places I'd have to move that decimal place that was there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could write that number, which is 120 million is 12 by 10 to the seven. So you can see that's a really much easier way of writing 120 million. Okay, so gets used when the numbers are very big, also gets used when the numbers is very large. So for example, if I had this number, okay, I could also write that as 12 by 10 to the power of, so what am I doing to the decimal point? I'm moving it this way this time, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven but it's a minus seven because I'm going the opposite way. Okay, so that's the chapter, that's the section, that's scientific notation. A Little bit hard at the start until you get used to it. And then once you have it, you have it. Okay. So what does this question mean? And what does the A by 10 to the N mean? And so on and so forth, okay. Um, Let's have a look. So the number we're dealing with is 6 billion, where a billion is a thousand million. So six, one, two, three, that's 6,000, 6 million, 6 billion. Okay, so that's 6 billion. And they want us to write it in the form A by 10 to the N, where one is less than or equal to A is less than or equal to 10. Okay, so what they're saying is, give me a number a by 10 to the n, where this a will only be a number between 1 and 10. Okay, so that number will be 6. I get that from here. So it'll be 6. So I'm going to put my decimal point here then. So how many frog jumps to move it from here back? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six by 10 to the nine, okay? And that represents six billion, okay? That's how they want you to do the answer. Of course, the same number would be if I said 60 multiply by 10, except in this case, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jumps. Okay, that's also the same number, but what's wrong with this one is that the A, which is the number they wanted, is not between one and 10 here. Okay, so that's why they put in this one is less than or equal to A is, is less than or equal to 10 business to, to have every student give it in the same format. Okay, so this one wouldn't be right for the purposes of your exam. It is a way of representing the number, but it's not what you were asked for in the question. So that's scientific notation and well worth knowing. Part E then, Philippe uses a linear model to estimate the percentage of their total sleep that men, men spend, so it's men this time, in deep sleep from 42 to 66 years. Some of his results are in the table below. So when it says it uses a linear model, it's saying it's treating the blue line as a line. So a straight line, that's what a linear model is. It's going, ah, it's more or less a straight line. Okay, and it's the blue line this time because it's men. Some of his results are in the table below. Complete the table so that the percentage follows a linear pattern. Show your workings out. Okay, well, If this would be kind, I might just move it on to here for a minute, if that's OK, so we don't have to keep flicking over and back. OK, so at age 40, it's telling me that it's going 15 percent. OK, so let me come up at age 40 to the blue line this time and let's go across. And that's where they're getting the 15 percent that's there. Right, let's come up at 45. Just going to clean that off so you can keep going with what I'm doing. To so come up at 45, 
to the blue line again. Let's go across. Okay, it's a little bit less. Will we go 14.5% maybe? Then age 50, up we come to the blue line and across. And you can see we're gone more than half. So they're reckoning 13.6, okay? Now what you can do and what I would do if I could, um, but it's very hard for me to do um, on a digital screen is literally draw a straight line on top there like such and it's a straight line. So basically, and then it's up to that straight line that you're taking all these measurements from because that's what a linear model is. It's called a line of best fit. You try and put that line as close to the original blue line as you can. Okay, so not a bad old attempt here digitally, but it'll, it'll be easier for you to do on paper. So that's why this one looks slightly different to what it was on mine, because I suppose now I can go up further to the blue line and across and I get closer to 13.6. Okay, so age 55 then, um, let's go to 55, up to that blue line and come across and I'm getting 13 there and then 60 up to the blue line and across and I'm getting 12.2. Okay, and you can see that um, it, it's estimates that you get. So, so people will have slightly different values depending on how they read off that table. But this is what the, the, the chapter on functions is. It's an awful lot of, can you read a table? Okay. Part F then, using the values in the table above, Philippe writes the percentage of sleep spent in deep sleep as a function of age for 40 is less than or equal to A is less than or equal to 60. The graph of this function is a line with a slope of minus 0.14. Explain what minus 0.14 means in the context of this question. And I probably shouldn't have deleted the slope then. Okay, so let me clean all the markings off. Let's see if I can move it a bit. Okay, I'll move it over this side this time. Okay, so the graph is a line with a slope of minus 0.14. So you should know that if, if a line has a minus slope, then it's coming down a hill, okay? It's a negative slope, okay? So how would you explain a slope of minus 0.14? Well then, as the age of men increases, then the amount or the percentage, I should say, rather than the amount, the percentage of time spent, and I'm just, I'm, I'm taking it from here. I'm not making up the English. Yeah. The time spent in deep sleep decreases. And the decreases comes from the minus, and then it's at a rate because slope is rate of at a rate of minus 0.14. Okay. So as your age goes up, the amount of percentage deep sleep comes down at a rate of minus 0.14. And, th and that's what deep sleep or that's what a slope means. So that was the last part of, of that particular question. <laughs> 